Now for this YouTube channel, I look at data pretty much every day, right? I look at how is Bitcoin performing? How is it performing relative to Ethereum? How is it performing relative to altcoins? Relative to stocks, relative to bonds, relative to gold, relative to property. I look at all of those things. Now, what I find fascinating is that there seems to be some kind of connection between one's character potentially and the favorite asset class. So some people are very deep into crypto because they want to make the 100x and it appears like that's the easiest to do in crypto because altcoins can be very small and become very big. For others, the favorite asset class might be property because it's a very inefficient market. You can lose a ton of leverage on top of that if you know how to potentially buy low and then fix up a property and then refinance that property, you can really scale yourself up into very high levels. Now, others might like gold, right? Because it does look a bit shady how everything is set up. There's leverage on top of leverage. And so it always seems like at some point in time, the whole system can crash down. And if you then own something safe, like gold, you should be doing fine. And then there's, of course, also the boomer generation that got told that you should have some kind of a 60-40 portfolio, 60% stocks, 40% bonds. And so you've got all these kinds of different investors that are focusing their wealth on one single asset class or maybe on two asset classes. And to a degree, I can understand this, right? Because one cannot be able to beat all of those different asset classes, right? You can't be the best person to pick an altcoin and also be super advanced in property and also be very good in trading traditional art, for example. So we have to focus our attention on something in order to be better than that market. That being said, the differences that we get within a market usually tend to be not as important as the market that we are picking at a particular point in time. In other words, the difference between the performances over time across the different markets is larger than the differences within a market. So there's a lot of correlation within a market, right? When Bitcoin goes up, then Ethereum goes up, then the altcoins go up. Or when the property market as a whole is going up, then it's very likely that your house is also appreciating. Or say when the S&P 500 is going up, it's also very likely that your Coca-Cola stop, uh, stock is up, right? And the same goes for the other way around. However, that's not true for two different asset classes, right? Cryptocurrencies might do very poorly and say property might do very well. So actually, what I believe is more important than trying to just be very good in one market is to figure out where is the general capital currently flowing? What kind of markets or what kind of asset class as a whole might currently be overvalued versus potentially undervalued? For example, what I did, right? And this is pretty much unheard of for a crypto channel, right? Crypto should be high risk, should be meme coin trading, etc. What I personally did is I invested a lot in long-term government bonds in April of this year. So I bought a long-term government bond ETF. I announced this to the premium members. I said I have a pretty strong position in this now. And I also said the exact ticker symbol, the thing that has relatively low fees and that has relatively high impact. And I bought quite a lot of that. And that outperformed both technology stocks, which by the way also went up during the time. It also outperformed crypto. Crypto went sideways during the time. And when you look at those long-term government bonds, right, the price development of that bond ETF relative to Bitcoin since April, that has outperformed more than 30%, right? So two very conservative, relatively speaking, conservative asset classes, if you are in Bitcoin or you're in long-term government bonds, makes a difference of 30% over the span of just half a year. So the choice of the right asset class at the right time might be even more important than just trying to beat within the asset class, trying to find the best all -time. Of course, if you find an altcoin that then suddenly 10 Xs and you put all your wealth on that, you can beat those 30% over six months. But of course, you wouldn't normally bet all of it, right? Because if you do, if you bet your entire wealth or if you bet the majority of your wealth on such risky plays, then very likely after a while you will be 100% broke, right? You might be right 80% of the time, but if in 20% of the time you're wrong and you bet everything and then you lose everything, then you're also broke, right? The risk of ruin goes up the more volatility you take. And so I find it interesting to think about the macro as well, to think about what is actually moving different asset classes. For example, for the long-term government bonds, why did they outperform everything else? It's because people are now speculating on falling interest rates. This month will be the first month 
where the Fed will announce a reduction in interest rates. And currently the speculation is that those reductions will continue happening for the next year until we are at around 3%. So that's what's currently priced into the different futures. This needs to go to 1 million or March buyers now will make millions. This is how you get the clicks on YouTube, but this is not how you beat the market. To beat the market in crypto, you need to be better informed than the rest. You need to be better skilled than the rest. You need to do better blockchain analytics. You need to track other people's wallets and know what is the smart money doing. It's the boring educational content that forms skill that doesn't perform so well on YouTube though. That's why I created the premium membership. Feel free to check it out. We are tracking influencer wallets to find out what they are buying before promoting this on YouTube. We've got a lot of tutorials to help with on-chain analytics, to help with wallet discovery. And of course, there are also plenty of chats where we help each other and also one-on-one -on -one conversations with me. So I'm messaging every premium member one-on-one -on -one directly. Once you're joining, you will get a message from me and you have the opportunity to directly pick my brain. Feel free to check it out. TheBitcoinTrader.com link is down below. And so when we look at precious metals, for example, we could also think, does it make sense to rather be heavily in gold or that makes sense to be rather in silver. When you look at the relative valuation chart of the two and you see that silver tends to be rather cheap right now. So maybe it makes sense just for diversification purposes to also own some silver. But then potentially, right, we can also look at silver relative to long-term government bonds or we can look at silver relative to US stocks or relative to Bitcoin. And so those kinds of relative valuation charts I find super, super useful. In case you don't do this yet, right, simply just go to tradingview.com and when you search for a ticker symbol, right, there's the search in the top left. When you search for something, then simply use a forward slash between two ticker symbols. So what you can do is you can, for example, enter gold forward slash BTC. Then you know what's the current gold price relative to Bitcoin. And you can look at this in different time frames. And very often we actually see very interesting support and resistance lines. And when we then also do measured moves, right, when we try to find out how much does this actually move from bottom to top and from top to bottom, we very often across asset classes see massive swings. So for example, when you look at the S&P 500, so the ticker symbol is uh, SPX, and you divide this by the gold price, so forward slash gold, and you look at that chart in TradingView, you see those massive waves from top to bottom of 97% or so. So if you bought gold at the wrong time and then you saw the crash, right, then you saw the crash relative to stocks, you would have roughly 30 times less money compared to when you actually made the move from gold to stocks at that point. So being in the right asset class is important. It's more important, I believe, than just beating one asset class. It's always good to outperform an asset class, but even if you outperform an asset class and that asset class as a whole has a bad year, you're not doing too great either, right? So let's say you are relatively okay in altcoin trading and you achieve an alpha of, say, 30% per annum which is already in the top 10 to 5% of traders. You get 30% outperformance over Bitcoin. But you do this during a year when Bitcoin itself goes down by 50%. You haven't earned anything, right? You did all of this trading, all of this research, and in US dollars, you haven't gained anything. That was simply because you didn't time the macro. So I believe the macro does matter. And so here's how I personally approach this. I think there's different kinds of fair value measurements for those different asset classes. So for example, for the property market, one could look at the current average or median property price relative to income and can see is there maybe some kind of trading range because property prices cannot be, say, 100 years income, right? Because at that point, people couldn't take out mortgages anymore. And so that wouldn't make sense. Or it might make sense to look at property prices relative to GDP, right? How big is the property sector relative to the rest of GDP is that maybe fluctuating in some kind of range. So it's important to look at some kind of range. You want to look at those very long term cycles over the decades and you want to find is there potentially very high levels and very low levels and are we somehow oscillating between the two. And if you're currently at an extreme in one of those levels, then it might make sense to buy or sell depending on what extreme we are at. So the property market, we can simply just look at those kind of macros. For the stock market, we can look at P.E. ratios, right? The historical P.E. ratio. So simply Google this, right? S&P 500 P.E. ratio chart or Schiller index chart. You can also see how we are hovering relatively reliably 
Sometimes they are very cheap, sometimes they are very expensive. For Bitcoin, I like to look at the realized price. So that's the average cost basis of the market. Is the market still in profit or in losses? If the market in aggregate is in losses, it's time to buy very heavily. For precious metals, it might sense to simply just divide the gold price or the silver price by the money supply, right? So by USM2. So since gold should protect against monetary expansion, we can simply do that, right? So you just enter in trading view again, gold forward slash USM2 and you get the relative variation. Or alternatively, one can also just look at gold relative to the S&P 500 or say the NASDAQ relative to the S&P 500, etc. All those relative variation charts are very useful to figure out are we currently potentially overheated or are we currently potentially very cheap? And it's very important, in my opinion, to figure out what are the main drivers of an asset class. So for the property market, I believe it's affordability. For stocks, I believe it's returns, thus the P.E. ratio. For Bitcoin, I believe it's where is the psychology of the market? Are people currently hyped? Are they in profit? Or are they all in aggregate and losses? If everybody is in losses, then people aren't going to sell that Bitcoin. So there are different kinds of drivers for different asset classes. And looking at the fair value or at the median value historically is a good indication. Looking at an asset class relative to other asset classes, I believe is also a very nice approach. And so the easy way is to simply just own all of those asset classes at the same time and have a portfolio with very little volatility, right? So a portfolio that doesn't go up and down that massively, that's relatively smooth. The somewhat more advanced version is to have some kind of target allocation and to have lower allocation to an asset class where you think we are currently expensive and have higher allocation to an asset class where you think we are currently very cheap. So again, I believe that on long-term government bonds, we are relatively cheap. I believe in silver, we are relatively cheap. I believe in Bitcoin, we are somewhat expensive now. I believe in property, we are also somewhat expensive. But again, this is simply just my measures. Your measures might be completely different, but trying to get those waves somewhat right, I believe is super important. Because again, capital flows are massive. And sometimes the market is pro gold. Sometimes the market is pro stocks. Sometimes the market is pro crypto. And trying to time this to a degree, trying to find things that are cheap and selling the things that are expensive it does boost portfolio performance a lot. I think it's very important to be somewhat opportunistic about this and do not just think about oneself as a crypto investor or as a property investor or as a gold bug. You want to stay somewhat flexible and you want to have the flexibility to sell when we are expensive somewhere and to identify something that's not in the area that you normally play with. So it does make sense to broaden the horizon somewhat and to potentially buy the evil, evil government bonds, even though we have this anachronistic money, this libertarian freedom called Bitcoin. If Bitcoin is overheated at some point and if it has the possibility to crash by 50, 60, 70 percent, then why go through that crash if there are alternatives? If you want to support this channel, feel free to give this a like. Feel free to also subscribe in case you haven't yet. And of course, join our Telegram. The Telegram link is down below. It's 100 percent free. Looking forward to chatting with you. Cheers.